Blackface minstrelsy is deeply embedded in the history of musicals and comedy in Hollywood. White Christmas has always been one of my favorite movies, and this has always been one of my favorite musical numbers from that film. I'd rather see a minstrel show than any other show I know. I've probably seen White Christmas a hundred times, no joke. It stayed on repeat in my house growing up, no matter the season. I've memorized all the musical numbers, and I could probably quote the movie line for line. But this number has always intrigued me. Mr. Bones, Mr. Bones, how do you feel, Mr. Bones? It seemed to be referencing some greater musical or cultural framework that I didn't know anything about. Who was this Mr. Bones and what was this routine they were doing? Well, it turns out that Mr. Bones is part of an early minstrel act called Mr. Tambo and Mr. Bones. I'm Dara Star Tucker and this is The Breakdown. The Tambo and Bones routine was referenced in several Hollywood musicals like White Christmas from 1954, 1939's Babes in Arms with Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney, and Yes, Mr. Bones from 1951. The idea is that you would have a white interlocutor flanked by a group of blackface characters. Mr. Interlocutor, what is wrong with you? Mr. Tambo and Mr. Bones, sometimes called Brother Tambo and Brother Bones, would normally sit on both ends. Mr. Tambo, who played the tambourine, and Mr. Bones, who rattled actual bones were two of the more popular characters that were used, but lots of comedy duos performed with this format. The sketch was characterized by lots of lowbrow repartee. Yes, Mr. Interlocutor. Why were you running down the street so fast last night? I was running to stop a fight. Who was fighting? Me and another fella. <laughs> A lot of the old jokes that you learned back in the second grade came from these sketches, the chicken crossing the road and so on. But most of it was much more pointed racial humor. They would play on stereotypes of the lazy Negro, the Uncle Tom, and the coon. After the Civil War, there were black and white performers who became well known doing this. White audiences at the time really wouldn't accept black performers doing anything else. So the Mr. Bones musical number from White Christmas is taken directly from this tradition. In fact, one of the stars of the film, Bing Crosby, also starred in a film that acted as the precursor to White Christmas called Holiday in in 1942. It's the film where the song White Christmas was first introduced. It has a lot of similar plot points to White Christmas, but since it was made 12 years before White Christmas, it leans a lot more heavily into its minstrel roots, with an entire number called Abraham, where Bing Crosby and the whole company dress in blackface and pretend to be former slaves singing the praises of Abraham Lincoln. It's really a sight to behold. Though many people may not know about Hollywood's long-standing love affair with blackface minstrelsy, we are still living with its legacy. Every few years, some prominent celebrity will be photographed or filmed in blackface or make some vacuous comment about how harmless it is, seemingly unaware of its degrading and damaging history, and the conversation will necessarily begin all over again. In part two, I'll talk about the history of blackface minstrelsy and how it came to be so deeply embedded in American popular culture.